What I have here is a vintage Soviet Geiger counter. It's a model DP5A. It's fairly common to be able to find these on eBay. And it's a really good Geiger counter for adding to your bug out kit for a number of reasons. First of all, it comes in this nice leather case and it's a really strong build. It's waterproof. It looks like it's Bakelite. And even after like possibly 50 years, it's still in good functioning order. So in the back, you have a probe, which can be mounted on a stick. It has this sleeve for two modes. So this, with it open, you can measure gamma and beta radiation. With the blocker on, you can measure gamma only. Inside here, it has uh, two different Geiger tubes for measuring low and very high range radiation. So it'll cover all the uh, options you're going to encounter. Plus, it usually comes with the manual, which even though it's written in Russian, it does have like the full circuit diagrams and everything uh, available. So if you translate the uh, Russian letters into English, it's generally a close match and you should be able to figure out how to service it. Now, the first tricky part though is the battery. So I'm gonna take it out and show you how we deal with powering the device. Okay, so this is the back of the unit where the batteries go. Now, the first thing you notice is it's a uh, very unusual size battery. It's a lot larger than a AA. It uses an old obsolete Russian battery. Now, it takes three. So these two which are put in series here are for running the actual Geiger counter. This one here on its own is for just running the backlight. So you don't actually need to use this if you don't want. Now, the matching type of battery to fit this is uh, currently in production is called an LR12. So you can find them in these four and a half volt modules here. And if you just smash it and cut it with some pliers, you break it away and you'll find you get three of these batteries which are the right size. Now a couple of things with these batteries. This side here is part of the terminal so what you want to do is wrap them up with a bit of tape. And another oddity of the batteries is that the uh, polarity is different than you would see in a AA battery. So when you install them, put them in backwards to what's drawn there. Now, one thing is, the problem is these batteries, in Australia they're particularly rare because most of our lantern torches run on 6 volts. So I had to order these off eBay. So what you might want to do is make up some sleeves that you can fit a AA battery in the right spacing and use that because a double A battery you can bend the terminals and squeeze it in and it'll work perfectly fine with the double A batteries so I'll just keep that one in there for the light another alternative is you'll uh, probably get with your unit this uh, pack which which you can remove the batteries plug that in and you get terminals so you can run it off a car battery, which is um, may or may not be practical for you at the time. So I'll screw these batteries back in place and then we'll have a look at how it operates on the front. Okay, here we are back at the front of the Geiger counter where all the uh, useful stuff is. So the first thing I'll point out is this switch here. And what that does is it controls a little uh, lamp behind the display. But you'll find you don't really need to use it much because the lamp is fairly weak and the display is fluorescent so you can see it in the dark. Now the next uh, feature here is on the side is the connector for your headset. So uh, if you're lucky you should get it provided with the original headset. Now the rubber around the edges is a little deteriorated but despite that it's still like very comfortable because it's got this elastic and leather and it fits on the head really nice and you get a good sound out of it. But what I'm going to do is connect a little buzzer speaker straight into the headset terminals. So hopefully on the video we'll be able to hear some of the clicking. So now we're going to go on to actually making measurements with the Geiger counter. 
So the first thing we need to do with this dial is set it to the first position, which is for calibrating the uh, high voltage power supply. So we have this knob on here, which we need to tweak left and right to shift the needle. And our intention is to get the needle matching up with the little black triangle on the top of the scale. So once we've done that, We've got it set up, it's all good. We can go on to picking which scale we want to use for our measurements. Now the first setting with the number 200, that's for making measurements from the high range Geiger tube. That uses a scale along the bottom, which goes from zero to 200 in units of regions per hour. Now that's a particularly high range. You're not gonna measure anything like that unless you're in like a seriously troubled area or you're measuring really close to a very active source. Most of the time you're going to be using the top scale which goes from 0 to 5 and that's measured in milli regions per hour and it's multiplied by whichever one of these factors you've dialed up. So start by setting it to the 0 0.1 scale And you can see it's measuring just a small amount of background radiation there. So we'll turn it up a notch, up to one. We're, we're going to make a measurement now. So what the unit comes with is at the top, underneath this little flap, is a source of strontium-90. Now that has a half-life of about 30 years, so that's still going to be active no matter how old your unit was or when you're going to get it. And it's also a beta source emitter. So I'm going to set the probe up with the window open so it's measuring beta and gamma radiation. And we set it on top and we can immediately start hearing. Set it up nicely. We can immediately start hearing some clicks and it's, it's going off the scale. So I'm going to have to go from 1 down to the 10 scale. When you change scales, this button is to re-zero the unit. Underneath this big screw here is another little set screw that you can calibrate the zero position with if you need to, but you don't need to here. So with it at zero, I'll release the button and let it take its measurement. And it's slowly going up around here at a measurement of about 12 millirentgens is where it's going to settle. So just to test our beta blocking feature, I'm going to change it now so it's covered. So it's only going to measure the gamma radiation. And then just re-zero. And we're getting nothing here, so I'll just turn the scale down. So it's on the one time scale. So you see we're measuring about half. So there's a very small amount of like secondary gamma radiation coming from this source. So everything seems to be working as expected. And this unit is ready, good to go to make field measurements. So there you have it. This is how to control your Vintage Soviet Russian DP-5A Geiger counter.